Ethiopia has a lengthy and illustrious history, similar to that of many other African countries. Ethiopia, one of the world's oldest countries, was one of the world's first Christian states, with its capital in the former Kingdom of Aksum. Ethiopia emerged into the global scene in the 19th and early 20th centuries as European powers started to conquer interior Africa. Following a decisive victory over colonial Italy in the 1896 Battle of Adwa, Ethiopia still remains one of the only African countries to have never been colonized. Ethiopia has experienced severe problems, despite being viewed as the epicenter of African prosperity and unification. Conflict erupted in the Ethiopian region of Tigray after the ancient monarchy came to an end with the killing of Emperor Hale Selassie II and the installation of a new military regime. If you are still watching this video, it means you like it. Please take a second to hit the like button and subscribe as it enables more people to view our content. Thanks. Now, where were we? Following the end of World War II, Ethiopia emerged as a significant proponent of the decolonization of Africa. Ethiopia was admitted to the League of Nations and the United Nations by Hale Selassie I, the Emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 until his death in 1974. With the founding of the Organization for African Unity, currently known as the African Union, he also turned Addis Abeba into the hub of international collaboration in African affairs. In 1975, the region started a struggle with Ethiopia's new government that lasted for decades. This conflict started with the formation of the Tigray People's Liberation Front or popularly known as the TPLF. Northern Ethiopia's Tigray region has historically maintained a predominantly agrarian population, with locals cultivating products like cereals, legumes, coffee, and cotton. The majority of ethnically Tigrayan people today belong to the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church, which has its headquarters in Addis Abeba. The Tigray people, who make up about 10% of the population of contemporary Ethiopia and 50% of the population of Ethiopia's northern neighbor Eritrea, are known to have descended from Semitic peoples. Although the Oromo and Amhara ethnic groups, which together make up about 60% of Ethiopia's total population, and the Tigray people share many cultural and religious similarities, linguistic differences, and Political rivalry has led to numerous conflicts between the Tigray people and the central Ethiopian government, including the war that started in November of 2020. There have been thousands, if not tens of thousands of losses on the battlefield during the two-year fight in Ethiopia between the Tigray People's Liberation Front and its allies and the Ethiopian government. Serious violations of human rights have been committed by all fighting parties. In the tremendous humanitarian disaster brought on by the conflict, 5.2 million people in Ethiopia's north have gone without food and essentials for a year because the government tried to choke the Tigray area on purpose and violence prevented relief from getting to them. In the Amhara and Afar regions, hundreds of thousands have been displaced and have suffered. The stability of the Horn of Africa and the Red Sea regions is threatened by the war's continued entanglement of surrounding nations. However, despite active diplomatic efforts, notably those of the United States, the African Union, and European nations, the conflict dynamics have been mostly determined by the conditions on the battlefield. Human rights allegations against Ahmed's government circulate as the crisis rages on. According to several reports, Tigray's special forces have attacked civilians numerous times. Devastation spread throughout the Tigray region, and despite a unilateral ceasefire ordered by the Ethiopian government on June 28, 2021, it has been estimated that as of December 2021, up to 400,000 people may be living in famine-like conditions within Tigray. Between October 2020 and June 2021, Tigray was the site of a significant number of human rights violations, including extrajudicial killings, torture, pillaging, sexual and gender-based violence, and the forcible displacement of civilians, according to a report from the UN Office of the High Commissioner. Over 2 million people have been displaced by the violence in Tigray, and up to 9 out of 10 individuals in the area now require humanitarian aid. The region is experiencing a growing water shortage, which has been made worse by the thousands of refugees who have fled to Sudan. Ethiopia has been attempting to move away from three decades of authoritarian rule by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front or the EPRDF, which was dominated by the Tigray ethnic minority since 2018, which has led to an increase in ethnic tensions and competition over state resources and power. 
Abe Inoromo, who was elected prime minister in 2018, fought to quell long-suppressed ethnic groups' resentments and calls for more rapid economic redistribution. Abe reacted with dictatorial methods and a combative stance toward Tigray political leaders, attempting to prosecute them for EPRDF crimes, while tensions led to ethnic violence, murders, and internal displacement. Leaders in Tigray then began to undermine Abe's administration. Tigray leaders disobeyed Abe's directives and held elections on September 2020 after he unilaterally delayed Ethiopia's August 2020 elections, using the COVID-19 outbreak as an excuse. Tigray leaders seized regional military storage facilities because of concern for the federal government's retaliation. Abe responded with military force and solicited the aid of Eritrea, a longtime foe of the TPLF, in the hopes of swiftly defeating the organization and sending a clear deterrence message to other ethnic groups. The two main warring sides in the Tigray conflict have had huge military fortune reversals since November 2020. Despite early ENDF or the Ethiopian National Defense Force victories, the strong Tigray forces grew stronger. The Tigray insurgency was made more entrenched by the ENDF and Eritrean forces, severe human rights violations against the populace of Tigray. The ENDF were defeated in Tigray by June 2021, and Abi ordered them to depart while announcing an unofficial ceasefire. On August 5, however, Tigrayan soldiers quickly advanced into the neighboring Afar and Amhara, taking the significant and ancient town of Lalibela. In order to break Addis Ababa's crippling embargo of Tigray, Tigray forces attempted to seize a crucial logistical artery in Afar, running from landlocked Ethiopia to Djibouti. In the summer and fall of 2021, Tigray forces swept through Amhara and advanced toward Addis Ababa, despite Abi's risky decision to organize anti-Tigray militias across the nation. The Tigrayan uprising seemed to be approaching the capital by early November, and the survival of the government seemed in jeopardy. The TPLF leadership demanded the establishment of a transitional government, Abi's resignation, and the restoration of Ampara-occupied Tigray territories, much like Abi had done before. However, the ENDF stopped the assault and pushed Tigray soldiers out of Ampora and the majority of Afar by acquiring drones from Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, and Iran, and bombarding them from the air. The drone purchases were made against heavy opposition from the US, which was upset that Iran, a former US adversary, was selling weapons to Turkey, a NATO ally of the US, and worried about civilian casualties and Turkey's more rebellious and loose cannon behavior. The crisis drew extensive international diplomacy from the United States and numerous European and African nations, notably Kenya, in addition to the contentious military backing for the Ethiopian government. Former Nigerian President Oluskan Obasanjo was named as the African Union's high representative, while renowned and experienced diplomat and Brookings colleague Ambassador Jeffrey Feltman was named as Washington's special envoy for the Horn of Africa. Since November 2020, these numerous initiatives to facilitate talks between the Ethiopian government and the TPLF have focused on a number of the same components, a thorough ceasefire, unhindered humanitarian access, inclusive peace talks about just power distribution in Ethiopia, the return of the ENDF to Great Amhara and Afar warring parties and affiliated militias to their original territory, and the removal of Eritrean soldiers from Ethiopia. The Ethiopian government and the Tigray forces, however, remained essentially non-responsive, despite the intense international engagement, each seeking to press for a temporary military advantage, if not the outright military defeat of the opponent, before engaging in negotiations or making any concessions. The Ethiopian government has grown increasingly estranged from the United States despite Washington's years of patronizing the EPRDF regime and supporting it as a crucial counterterrorism ally in Somalia and the Horn of Africa. This is because of Washington's criticism of and tougher responses to the government's involvement in the Tigray humanitarian catastrophe. The United States launched a smart sanctions regime in September 2021 that targeted a broad range of actors, with the exception of humanitarian aid, such as officials of the Ethiopian government, Tigray and Amhara leaders and Eritrean soldiers. In order to encourage humanitarian access and internal discussions, sanctions against the Eritrean forces were put into effect while those against other forces were postponed. Furthermore, because certification is statutorily tied to human rights compliance, 
Ethiopia's eligibility for duty-free imports under the U.S. African Growth and Opportunity Act, or the AGOA, was put in jeopardy. The AGOA provided Ethiopia with roughly $100 million in hard currency per year and 100,000 to 200,000 jobs, most of which went to southern Ethiopian women working in textile industries. The sanctions regime and diplomatic engagement appear to be having an impact in the late fall. Madison Sands Frontier's humanitarian work license was finally reinstated by the Ethiopian government in November, but the Norwegian Refugee Council was still denied access to it. Abi stopped ENBF forces from advancing near the borders of Tigray on December 21, 2021, but airstrikes continued into January 2022, resulting in civilian fatalities. Access to humanitarian aid is still restricted under these dire circumstances. The Abi administration, which was re-elected in the fall, made a campaign promise to create a commission for national discourse, and parliament in Ethiopia approved its creation on December 30, 2021. The warring parties in Ethiopia have been urged by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and other diplomats to take advantage of the situation and initiate peace talks with the help of international mediators, such as Obasanyo. Even if it is crucial to continue the international mediation efforts, there are troubling indications. The TPLF and its military affiliate, the Oromo Liberation Army, are both considered terrorist organizations by the Ethiopian government making the National Dialogue Commission's exclusion of them the most important among them. Furthermore, the Ethiopian government may have taken its many wildly insufficient actions primarily to prevent Ethiopia from being expelled from AGOA. However, the United States did withdraw Ethiopia from the trade program on January 1, 2022. Indirect rumors that the Ethiopian government would be ready to begin talks with the TPLF started to spread towards the end of January. Even if those rumors are true, it's unclear what Addis Abibo will desire beyond TPLF leaders being severely punished and a victor's peace, which would prevent any negotiations. While the horrific suffering of people in northern Ethiopia continues, the insurgency may well resuscitate itself in the Tigray region, returning the nation to the situation of March to April 2021. Without providing a time or location, the Ethiopian government declared on Wednesday, 10 October 2022, that it had accepted an invitation from the African Union to hold peace talks with rebels in the northern Tigray region. An invitation for peace talks has been made by the African Union. In keeping with our fundamental stance on the need for negotiations without obstacles and the necessity for a peaceful resolution of the conflict, the government of Ethiopia has accepted this invitation, the National Security Advisor to Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, Red One Hussein, stated in a tweet. The Ethiopian Government Communication Service, or GCS, claimed in a statement that the AU had only mentioned the date and location of the talks in its invitation. The rebel authorities in Tigray, who are at odds with the federal government of Ethiopia, did not immediately reply when questioned by AFP about the invitation. The scheduled discussions between Tigray and Ethiopia will be the most serious attempt to resolve the war between the two countries ever if Debrechen de Bremichel leader of the Tigray People's Liberation Front attends. No information regarding the attendees, including if the adjacent Eritrean nation has been invited, has yet to be made public. Tiger rebels have always stated that Asmara will not be permitted to attend any talks. According to a diplomatic source, the AU has formed a troika of mediators consisting of former South African Vice President Fumzal Malambon Kuka, former Kenyan President Yugru Kenyatta, and former Nigerian President Oluskin Obasanjo, the group's special envoy to the Horn of Africa. Fighting resumed on August 24 in northern Ethiopia between Tigrayan rebels and the Federal Ethiopian Army, supported by forces from the Tigray bordered areas in Eritrea, following a five-month truce that sparked hopes for peace negotiations. After a previous trip to the area in September, U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa Mike Hammer returned on October 3 to assist in the beginning of peace talks under the auspices of the African Union, and achieve an immediate cease of hostilities in northern Ethiopia. The 2019 Nobel Peace Prize, which Prime Minister Ahmed received for his efforts to create peace and international collaboration, and especially for his decisive move to resolve the border issue with neighboring Eritrea, has also been called into question by several human rights activists. 
Thanks for watching this video till the end if you enjoyed it please remember to leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel we love having new subscribers join our small online community here on Think Rich Africa. See you in the next video.